Amongst the collision object nodes, there's one that's deceptive simplicity belies a massive amount of utility. The area node, which, true to its name, allows you to define an area within your scene. Said area can then be used to do three things. Detect other bodies that are inside it, change the physics within itself, and redirect positional audio to other audio buses. So, let's go ahead and dive into this body's inner workings, starting with its variables. Specifically, the ones that affect the areas themselves. The first two of whom are the bulls monitor bull and monitor ring with the former being a bool that allows the area to be detected by other areas, and the latter allowing the area itself to detect collision bodies and other areas. Be aware that even when monitoring is off, the area can still change the physics and audio of nodes inside it, so it's often a good idea to turn monitoring off when that's all you're using it for. After that is priority, an integer defaulted to zero which determines the order that areas are processed, with the higher priority areas getting processed first. This doesn't affect the area's ability to detect bodies, but can have a huge impact on the physics within them and what bus audio gets redirected to. And, speaking of which, it's time to move on to the variables that facilitate said audio redirection. With the first being Audio Bus Override, a bool that enables the area's ability to override the default audio bus of any positional audio player that is inside it. With the overriding bus being determined by the area's audio bus name, a string defaulted to master corresponding to the ever-present master bus. This ability is great for creating interesting sound environments thanks to the myriad of procedural effects that audio buses can have within them. Like, for example, using an area node to redirect audio to a bus with a high pass filter. Notice how it made the audio sound like it was coming from the other side of a wall? That's just one of the many effects this can help you easily achieve. Though the effect you most often see and are most likely to use is reverb, an effect that makes audio sound like it's echoing. This is so common a use case, in fact, that 3D areas actually have four reverb bus variables that are wholly dedicated to achieving it without completely overriding an audio player's default bus. Beginning with the ever straightforward reverb bus enable, a blow that enables the effect. Following that is where things get a bit less straightforward, with Reverb Bus Name, a string defaulted to master. Now what this does is look at the named audio bus, and if it has a reverb effect applied to it, and no others, the area will take said bus's effect and apply it on top of whatever the audio's default bus is already doing. Once you have that set, you can fine tune the effect with Reverb Bus Amount, a float ranging from 0 to 1 that effectively dictates the reverb's intensity, and Reverb Bus Uniformity, another float ranging from 0 to 1 that controls how close reverberations are to each other. Here, let's have a listen to all this in action with different settings. <laughs> Moving on from that, we have the set of variables responsible for controlling how the area interacts with physics, specifically the physics of rigid bodies inside them. Kicking off with space override, an enumeration where 0, the default, is disabled, 1 is combine, 2 is combine replace, 3 is replace, and 4 is replace combine. Three of these have obvious meanings, disabled simply disabling the effect, Combine adding the scenes, rigid bodies, and other overlapping areas physics settings together, and replace directly overriding all of the physics settings within the area with its own. Take note that when multiple areas set to replace overlap, the one with the highest priority is the one that takes effect. Combine replace and replace combine on the other hand, at first glance, seem a little less obvious. But don't worry, they are actually surprisingly straightforward. Combine Replace combines its physics properties with everything that's been calculated before it, in priority order, overriding anything else that would be calculated after it, and Replace Combine does the same but in reverse, overriding everything that has been calculated before it, then allowing everything that would be calculated after it to be combined. Also, an important thing to keep in mind with this is that the scene's physics is calculated last. Now following that variable is the dual of gravity, an integer in 2D, and float in 3D, and gravity vec, a vector. These variables together work just like the regular gravity within the scene does, creating gravity of a constant force and direction regardless of where the rigid body is within the area. That is unless you use gravity point, a bull that, when true, causes the gravity vector variable to be ignored, and instead all gravity will either pull bodies toward when gravity is positive, or push bodies away when gravity is negative from the area's origin. 
Alongside that, there's also a gravity distance scale, a float representing the factor by which the area's gravity will fall off with distance when using point gravity. Finally, after all of that, the last two physics variables are angular and linear dampening, whom, of course, affect the variables of the same name within rigid bodies that enter the area. If you want a more in-depth look at audio or rigid body physics in Godot, consider checking out my other Godot Basics videos on those subjects. Alright, now let's move on to what areas are most commonly used for, detecting the things inside them with the simplest way being via their functions, which come in two groups, the first being made of get overlapping areas and get overlapping bodies, both returning a list of references to the other areas or physics bodies within the area respectively. In contrast, the second group being overlaps area and overlaps body simply returns a bool representing if the area or body given as their argument is within the area. These are every bit as useful as they look, but do have a notable caveat. That being the fact that these will always be around a frame behind the actual physics simulation. Now, for many use cases, this won't matter. But for situations where it does, those most commonly being hit and hurt boxes, you'll instead want to use signals due to their more instantaneous nature. Said signals also come in two groups, the standard entered exited type and the more advanced shape entered exited type. Take note that these follow the same pattern as the previous functions, with each having a variation for detecting areas and bodies. That said, these all return information on the nodes that trigger them. But, while the first group only returns a reference to said node, the second group returns said reference, this time as their second argument, along with three additional pieces of information. Those being the colliding node's ID, aka its resource ID, an integer meant to be used with the physics server for low-level operations as their first argument, the triggering node's collision shape index as their third argument, and the emitting area's collision shape index as their final argument. These collision shape indexes can be used to find the specific collision shapes involved in triggering the signal through code like in the on-screen example. And there we go, practically all you'll need to know about area nodes and how to use them. Hope you found this helpful, and if you have any criticisms or ideas for future videos, please feel free to let me know down in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep up with my content. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.